everybody and welcome back to my studio, The Pottery Corner, down on the south coast of England, near Chichester. Welcome along everyone. It's been a little while since we had a kiln opening video. We've had Christmas and New Year and now we're back in the swing of things and the studio is opening again this week. So we're back on the treadmill gang. Um, so I'm going to show you um, a piece that I've already taken out of the kiln. If you saw last week's video, you'll know that I've unpacked the bird bath um, and indeed we did the glazing of the bird bath in the um, previous video. So if you haven't seen that yet, do take a look. It's um, one of my tutorials rather than a kiln opening. Um, so do take a look at that um, if you haven't seen it. So I've already taken it out of the kiln. So we've already had the sneakiest of sneakies just on the top layer, just to take the bird bath out. So, you know, don't go too mad. No sneaky peek Sarah going on just yet. So, um, I just thought that I would share with the people that watch the kiln openings rather than maybe watching the tutorials, how the bird bath came out. So this is a craft crank bird bath made using a rhubarb leaf. And as I've said, there's a full tutorial in three parts on how to make this. So if you're interested, take a look at the playlist for that. Um, and this has been glazed using uh, Amoco's Blue Rutile uh, wiped back on the leaf and then put into the larger veins using a combination of iron yellow, ancient jasper and oatmeal on the birds with palladium on the little snail and on the beaks of the bird and the eyes of the birds just to give them some definition. Um, so that's the actual rhubarb leaf section itself. And uh, this is the stand, which you've seen before. So it's just a conical stand in the same glaze. So that's all safely through and we'll be going to um, its new owner in a week or so. Um, so I'm hoping that, the, that they'll be happy with that. OK, so um, having said that, I haven't actually looked at anything else. I haven't even had the sneakiest of sneakies on the lower um, shelves of the kiln so let's get it open it's down to 39 degrees centigrade so we're okay to get it up and have a look and see what we've got so obviously there's a shelf in here from when the bird bath came out so I'm just going to remove the shelf pop that over onto Midge okay now this again is a slightly strangely um, packed kiln I'm just going to take the props out and uh, starting anew in 2022, I shall try to be slightly nicer to my kiln props. Um, right, so the first thing out of here, I should explain before I tell you what this is. Um, about a month or so ago, my sister and I went on a basket making course. It's always quite nice when you're a uh, I hate the word creative, but you know, when you're a person that likes to do, um, to go and make something else and see the processes that other people have on how they, how they make their craft. Um, so we went and did a willow um, weaving course and I made this basket. So this basket was made by me. Um, and we had a great time, a really, really good time. And Nikki at Yoga and Willow, which is based in Rygate in Surrey, um, makes these beautiful baskets. I mean, really, really, really beautiful. So this is one of hers, um, which I bought, or in fact, my sister bought me for Christmas. Um, isn't it beautiful? Really lovely, all natural. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So anyway, when I was there, um, she had had a friend of hers make her some basket bases for her to then put the willow into to make little baskets with a gallery on. They'd make nice um, cheese plates to put cheese on, but her friend was having trouble with the clay that she was using. Um, and indeed it is an interesting make because this, when it went through, I've decided to do them in Craft Crank to make them slightly um, more robust. This, when it went through on the biscuit firing was absolutely fine, but when it's gone through on the glaze firing, it actually has cracked through the holes. We are asking the clay to do quite a lot there by making these holes quite near the edge. Um, but um, it's still a work in progress. So um, that one actually it has split, um, but we could use it as a prototype. The glaze on here, just for information, this is, as I say, the craft crank clay is um, Amoco's Deep Olive Speckle. 
Um, so that's a, a disappointing first one out. Um, I have got more that I haven't yet glazed. So when I come to actually um, pop them in the kiln, I'm going to have to work out how to stilt them. This time I did it on um, kiln props because I wanted to have a glazed edge on the back um, so that when the willow went through, it had the glazed section where the willow went through. And of course that then means that I can't put it flat in the kiln, uh, but clearly that doesn't work because it's asking a lot of the piece not to warp. So we'll have to do a little bit more thinking on that. Um, but as, as usual, prototypes and things, it's always good to do a prototype and have a go um, to see what works and what doesn't. So interestingly, the next one down, which actually is very interesting. The next one down, which is this one, so the same thing, and I've just used a leaf stamp on this one. This is Amco's Pear, has not cracked. So there we go. And it was propped in the same way. It has warped slightly, but actually I don't think that's going to matter when it's actually got the willow around it. So I'm looking forward to exploring this a bit more and, and I'll show you the finished products when we finish making them. Because what I'm hoping will happen is that I will um, give a, well make the, the basis for Nikki and Nikki will teach me how to do the willow so that I shall be able to make make them for my own um, crafting and she will be able to use my bases for hers and we live far enough away from each other that we're not going to cross pollinate so that would be quite a good collaboration so I'm looking forward to taking taking that somewhere there isn't very much in this kiln uh, this is one of Joe's pieces and again those of you who watch my videos regularly will know that we lost Joe. Um, this was one of the hand-built pieces that Jo made um, before she sadly passed away and her husband brought back for me to glaze. But actually Karen glazed this one, my friend Karen, and um, she wrote out the combination for me because of course I won't remember. And it is Amico's Blue Rutile by one coat with two coats of Chun Plum over the top. Now when this came to me in its um, dry form, it did have this split in it. And um, I kind of felt that it was appropriate to leave it as Joe had last seen it um, rather than repair it. Um, so it, it, it has its warts and all and she's made it with a textured mat. And actually the glaze combination on there has come out really nicely, shows the texture. Very nice. So thank you, Karen, for coming and glazing that. And there are, I think there's one more piece for me to do before I get in touch with her husband. And the last piece in the kiln is an orchid pot uh, made by Jane. Uh, this has been hand built again um, and she's done some sh slip decorating on here. So she's used some of the studio slips with a henna bottle. Actually, really nice, come out really well. Quite pleased with that, nice texture on there. I hope you can see the raised texture, rather lovely. Um, and that is glazed in Amico's Glacier. So that one is Jane. So that's all that's in the kiln. Now, because we haven't done a kiln opening for a few weeks, there's an awful lot of shout outs. So thank you as ever for taking the time to send me messages. Um, a couple on wonky pots. So the first one came from Luisa Cristina Miranda, um, who, who's in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. How about that? Amazing, amazing where people watch from. And she's uh, made some textured um, bisque stamps and she says now I think I'm ready to try the wonky pot uh, so she's made herself some textured discs um, for making the wonky pot so well done Louisa thank you for sending me that and this one is Misty Richards um, not entirely sure where you are Misty I've forgotten I've sent you the wonky pot template and here is Misty with her wonky pot template ready for the project. So well done, Misty. I'll look forward to receiving a note when you've um, actually completed. Send me pictures of your finished pieces. Um, Natalie Walker said that they were on, <laughs> this made me laugh. We are on vacation at Disney World in Florida this week. And then she still, she still sent me a message. You can tell us clay people are bonkers, can't you? 
Um, so when she, before she left home, which she's in Maryland in the USA, she had just finished the Wonka Pots and Poppy Heads and they'd come back from the firing. So she was so excited to send me pictures. She couldn't wait till she got home. So that really made me laugh, Natalie. So anyway, these are said um, uh, seed pods or poppy heads. And again, there's a, um, a tutorial on how to make those. Lovely, look at that, beautiful. Lovely head on that one. Uh, that's very, very nice. And a lovely glaze too. And these wonky pots, superb. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Lovely texture, beautiful glazing, really nice. And the last one of those, or second to last one, I think. Oh no, last one. And again, lovely texture on there. So really, really nice, Natalie. Thank you so much for taking the time whilst you were on holiday to send me a message. Much appreciated. This one is from Hel Helena Wick Torson. I hope I've said that right, Helena. Um, and she sent me some pictures of, um, she tried the mono printing project. So again, there are mono printing videos, mono printing tutorials on the channel. Do take a look. Um, she said it was great fun to do them and this was her first try. Thank you for the inspiration. So I've, I haven't managed to make large pictures of the pieces that Helena sent me, um, but I hope you can see those. So she's made some dishes with some lovely monoprint on and actually the bigger pictures do show them much better, but unfortunately for some reason I couldn't open the images. Uh, next is, this one is from Charlene Thomas and she has done again she's done some poppy heads loves the videos she loves the videos um, and sent me a picture of her poppy head and also a picture of her nanny pot she calls it a nanny pot which has a central tube which seeps water out for when you are away from home so this is charlene's um poppy head again beautiful very nice top on there, nice open seed pod. Um, and then the second picture is of the nanny pot. What a good idea that is to put your plant your house plant in a pot that you can then put the water in the central uh, reservation. That's very clever, well done. Uh, this one is from Polly, I Polly Ireland um, and she is in Spring Hill in Kansas. Um, and she was without her studio for much of the year and waited seven months for a new kiln, my goodness. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a long time. Um, but she did give her a chance to make some wonky pots and poppy heads. So again, she enjoyed the videos. These are just beautiful, Polly, really lovely. So this is the first, look at the lovely glaze on there. Lovely, lovely texturing on the head. Lovely, lovely. I like that. And she's used the um, the pearl necklace sprig that we were using on the tutorial. Beautiful wonky pots again. I mean, look at the glaze on there. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Um, and I loved the second one of hers. Um, she's made the legs into these little little cones. Look at those. Those are great. And look at the texture on there with the bees. Really lovely and a beautiful yellow glaze. That is smashing. So Polly, well done. Those really are gorgeous. Thank you for sending me those. A couple more. I know, I know, I get so many messages. I can't leave anybody out. This one is from Donna Gray. We were talking about saturation gold a few um, videos ago and I said that I wasn't overly um, impressed with it. And she has said, please don't quit on saturation gold. It takes a lot of coats, but is a real winner. And she sent me a, a little um, picture of the pieces of hers with the saturation gold on. And actually, she's right. It does look rather lovely. So I might try saturation gold with more coats, Donna. So thank you for that. Um, and nice um, holiday season messages. Thank you very much. Um, and this one is from Katie Walters. Now, Katie Walters has been watching my channel right from the very start. So Katie, hello. Um, it's really, really lovely to get your messages when you send them through. Um, it's just, it's really nice to sort of feel we have a connection across the miles um, and, 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 a, and a love of pottery. So, um, she has finally got round to making her version of the poppy head. And actually, I really like the way that she's taken it and made it her own. So, she's very slightly altered the make. Um, and the top is very slightly different and the... 
Um, the spines give it much more movement, so those are really lovely. Um, and lovely glaze on there. This one sort of shows it in a little bit more detail. Really pretty. So thank you, Katie, for sending me those. Um, it's always a delight to hear from anybody that watches my videos and finds them inspiring. So thank you for that. And I hope to see you all on the next video when we'll hope to continue our journey with clay at the Pottery Corner. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.